Brother Simon's Article 43, God's Sovereignty. Most of my friends are atheists who go about their days totally oblivious of the fact that every move they make and every action they take has been scripted by God and with whom they don't believe. Some of them quite fervently, almost with a religious intensity, ironical, huh? In the same manner as the religious of this world, atheists cling on to the illusion that they are masters of their own destinies. Free will is much of a religion to them as it is to Christians who are so adamant that God is a gentleman and won't interfere in his creature's decisions as to where they spend eternity, as if. Why don't we ask him how much control he actually has and wields, former of light, creator of darkness, maker of good and creator of evil? I, Yahweh, make all these things, Isaiah 45, 7. Light, dark, good, evil, that's pretty much a good start. Let's continue. For I am El, and there is no other El Elohim, and no other like me, telling from telling from the beginning, and that hereafter from, and from aforetime, what has not yet been done, saying, All my counsel shall be confirmed, and all my desires shall I do. Isaiah 46, 9, 10. God can tell the end, the hereafter from the beginning, because he is the one who writ has who has written the script. Nothing or no one can derail God from doing all he desires. King David certainly understood this. In my days, all of them were written upon your scroll. The day is they were formed when there was not one of them. Psalms 139, 16. Before night divided the day, God had already written the days of our lives, his creatures, all of whom would make their entrances and exits as scripted by him. Every last one of us perfectly choreographed by God himself. Is that it? Exodus 4.21, God tells Moses, when you go to return to Egypt, see to all the miracles which I place in your hand, that you do them before Pharaoh, yet I shall make his heart steadfast, and he shall not dismiss the people. Who hardened the Pharaoh's heart? God did, and he forewarned Moses exactly what he was going to do, and he kept the Pharaoh's heart hardened against the Israelites until he was done demonstrating his power to the Egyptians. Okay, you say that was way back then, maybe God is... Change the way he does things now. Then let's see what Paul, the apostle of the nations, has to say about that. Remember, Paul's revelations are divinely inspired, as he reminds us in Second Timothy 3.16. All scripture is inspired by God. The God who makes the world and all that is in it, he, the Lord, inherent of heavens and earth, is not dwelling in the temples made by hands, neither is he attended by human hands, as if requiring anything, since he self gives to all life and breath and all. Acts 17, 24, 25, God requires nothing from humans, nothing after all. He is the one giving life and breath and all to all. That's a pretty definite statement. And if life and breath weren't enough, God also gives all to all. All is in everything. Paul doubles down on the subject a few verses later. For in him we are living, moving, and are. Acts 17.28, again, another pretty definitive statement. Living, moving, and are. I think right about now we've got this covered. God has total control and he wields his power as he so chooses or chose. Since he wrote the script before the days were formed. But wait, there's more. In Ephesians 1.1.1. Paul states that God is operating all in accord with his counsel of his will. The key words are all in his will that no, that leaves room for no one else, no one. In Romans 8.20, Paul tells us, For to vanity was the creation subjected, not voluntarily, but because of him who subjects it, we were subjected, and God did the subjecting, and he didn't ask us if we wanted to be. We simply were. Romans 9.18, Paul harkens back to the story of Moses and the Pharaoh, consequently then, to whom he is merciful, and yet he will, he is hardening. I, Thinking at the end of the day, Pharaoh didn't appreciate God's hardening his heart. One day in the future, however, he will thank God for making him a vessel of dishonor in this vast production. He had a role to play, and God made sure he played it, played his part perfectly. Draw his Paul tells us in Romans 9, 20, 21, that which is molded will not protest the molder. Why did he make me thus? Or has not the potter the right over the clay out of the same kneading to make one vessel indeed for honor and yet one for dishonor? We are the clay. God is the potter. He has ultimately ultimate say. So when it comes to kneading us into vessels for his use, deal with it. In the end, it will all work out as Paul tells us in Romans eleven thirty two. for God locks up all together in stubbornness that he should be merciful to all. Merciful to all is another way of saying the doctrine of hell is utter bullshit. 
Just in case you weren't sure, Paul goes on to say in Romans 11.36, out of him, through him, and for him is all. Everything is out of God, and he is the source of all. Everything is through him, and he is the channel of all. Everything is for him, and he is the object of all. To sum it up, all is of God. Corinthians 11.12. So what do believers and unbelievers, religious and worldly, have in common? God gave those those who believe faith, and he withheld faith from those who don't believe. He did it all for his purpose, which you can read about more in my post, A Brief History of Time. Stop worrying. God's got this.